greetings brothers and sisters from Johannesburg, South Africa, from uh, my humble home. And uh, is my lawn looking all right? Okay. It's looking all right. It's looking all right. And if you hear George, George, we've heard him throughout the end time series. Yes, yes, the dog, George. <laughs> we don't know what his name is. We just call him George. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm very grateful for this place. Just walking distance around me, there are seven churches. So I neighbor right here over this fence is the one. And my other fence on this side is a Agape Christian school. <laughs> so really, I feel blessed. I didn't know that when I bought it in. Is it the seven churches of Revelation? The seven churches of Revelation and there is a, a, a Christian school. <laughs> okay, so now that Rossin has just given us our location, we wanted to welcome you guys. So we are completed with our end time series. And what a series it was. I'm not going to lie to you, Rossin. You and I were attacked from every single side, but the Lord was sure. good. Um, I think I... Yeah, the devil got the better of me one day. I, I actually just, I gave in. Guys, it happens. And this is why Rustin and I are still at it, but our end time series is complete. But today we're gonna to talk about, you know, the fundamental basics of being a Christian, how to how to live the Christian life. So this is part one. Rustin has written down a couple of scriptures. So guys, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Give us your thoughts, get in touch with us, and join our ministry because yes, we have got so much that we wanna do. We are not what you would call your typical, typical um, denominational yeah. formal church yes so to speak and uh, but it, it it was never meant to become that uh, then um, remember the Christianity began in house churches and once uh, when I was maybe a second or first year believer I read the book of uh, um, Acts and how they used to get from house to house every day to break bread, to do a communion, to share the gospel. And the Lord spoke to me yeah. and he says, my son, my church began in homes and my last day church, true church once again will be in homes. It won't be in buildings. And that is a witness to what you have to say as well. And let, let's talk about this, guys. So we, you know, to praise God to all of those who survived lockdown. And this is where, you know, the church is evolving and moving. As people are realizing that church buildings are actually liabilities now. Because churches, well, some churches are becoming desperate and they're pulling some tactics about how to get their ties and members have lost their jobs their businesses and it is survival of the fittest so what we want to do is encourage you guys to please follow along with this series where we talk about christian fundamentals basics and uh Rustin, you've prepared something that you are going to yes lead um, and guide us with the aim of this uh the, this this series are called practical practical christianity series um and involves practical things in Christianity. How to get baptized, how to lead someone to Jesus if he wants to receive Jesus, um, how to anoint yourself to anoint your house or someone, how to dedicate your home, anoint your home property and dedicate it, how to dedicate your marriage, your work, your children to the Lord. Um, how to break generational curses and be set free and dedicate your life free of the uh, sins of the forefathers and many similar topics that are not addressed per se in formal churches on a doctrinal level it may some of those things may be mentioned but on the practical level simply there is no clear guidance what to do when this happened or that happened and I've decided, okay, let's compile a series uh, that will actually target this particular necessity in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Practical Christianity, that is the main theme behind Yeah, and I'm just, before Rossing gets into it, I'm going to remind you guys that I too was in and out of the churches. I, I was. I was one of those people, one foot in the world, one foot in the church, didn't know my Bible, didn't pray, then I prayed, but then I sinned, then I stopped praying. It's normal to fall away and come back. However, being born again, this is something that this series is going to help you with. So I wanted to tell you guys 
please don't feel bad if you have fallen away and you want to come back. It's normal, but under discipleship, you're going to find that you are going to be so strong with the Lord. Being attacked, it's so normal. Like, But the nice thing is you are going, God is going to increase grace, wisdom, and knowledge, and you are going to be able to, you're going to be able resist. to stand. You're going to be able resist. to resist the devil. Yes, yes. And uh, this has been my journey as well. So Rustin has been discipling me. So yes, expect plenty of mistakes as you've experienced with sure. me. Plenty mistakes with me, plenty times where I've been hot-headed, I've been egotistical, I've been prideful. And what discipleship has done and the, you know, the, the knowledge and what the Holy Spirit has done just calmed me down. Amen. So guys, Rustin is here to help you and I want to thank you, Rustin. You can take it away. Sure, brother. And uh, brothers and sisters, um, uh, we're not aiming to... Um, to bash anybody, including the formal churches. I fellowship with friends from formal churches that are wonderful people. And I know even in formal and informal churches and setups, you get wonderful people, wonderful Christians. Uh, we love them. Uh, what I simply want to say is that there is a trend. The church as, as a um, majority, uh, remember at the end time series we spoke about it in general the mainline church in the world today is a Laodicean type of church lukewarm however there are many hot churches but they are very few and the trend is that um, those that will be ready for the Lord they're moving away from the mega churches prosperity gospel churches the formal churches, because in order to comply with the new regulations, including um, uh, anti-Christian laws of the different lands, preachers in the formal churches start compromising the message. They believe that they're doing a good thing to protect the setup. However, the believers, on the other hand, are not fed properly, and they feel that hunger for more, deeper things of God. And as a result, they start actually moving into small cell groups, uh, Christian fellowships at homes, and that is the trend. And I believe it already started worldwide. And so really, we don't want to criticize anyone. We want to say simply, we want to actually address something that at large, I find it missing the practical side of Christianity. And if you guys want to know more about us, all of the information is down below. We've got our website links, we've got our videos, practically everything you need to know. And guys, what I want to say is churches thrive through persecution. If I look at China, what they do to Christians and yet how those Christians thrive. Indeed. Underground and in secret, it's, it's amazing. And it's just amazing to see how when suffering the most, that is where you'll find the strongest Christianity. Exactly. But here where Christianity is so free and available in some countries, it tends to be a little bit weak. And I think we need to address this and change this. Amen. Amen. And uh, the one difference of this series that I want to say is unlike the end time series, is that you'd have a transcript available if you email us after watching this video in the description box you can simply email us and say i'd like a transcription copy um, of the message it's a very short messages i'm trying to keep them around 15 20 minutes the most um, because i'm aware that uh, one may require uh, more data in order to if the videos are too long so please feel free to ask for to email us and ask for the transcript we'll email it to you straight away because you may not remember what did he say about it what about this because there it's like steps to take in this practical measures and uh, a, a series that we're going through or oh, just remember guys i leave links in all the videos people can download our videos and i don't charge you know we don't charge you guys download yeah. them for free use them i even have to refer back to the videos that we've done because i am also still learning no, the transcript is helpful because sometimes you may be invited and someone yes. wants you to come to them and tell them how to get saved or baptized or this and that and now you cannot uh, it, you cannot just tell them okay watch the video they expect you to actually lead them in the whole thing yes we've made it. this kind of easy where well, you have i've just been uh, <laughs> 
know you fine brother. Um, so let's start. Uh, today, part one from the Practical Christianity series is how to lead someone who wants to receive Jesus. How to lead someone who wants to receive Jesus. Um, remember, this is the easy part. It's more difficult part to, to, um, to plant the faith, the seed of faith in someone in order for them to want to receive Jesus. That's the most difficult part. That is the sharing of the gospel. But here is I'm addressing a case where someone is ready to receive Jesus and suddenly you find yourself in a situation that you have to lead someone to the Lord. They want to formalize it and you're not too sure where to start and what to do. Okay, um, here is what you do when a person say to you, you know what, I attended church service or I watched something else or this and that and I want to receive Jesus. Or I said the prayer at, at after watching that video but I'm not too sure if I did it right and I really want to be led to the Lord properly. In that case, what you can do is you can ask six basic questions. Okay, question number one. Ask them the following. Do they believe that Jesus, the Son of God, was born of the Virgin Mary, died for their sins, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended to heaven, and will soon return as prophesied in the Scriptures? If they nod and say yes, then you go to the second question. Are they ready to lose their lives in order to receive the divine life of Jesus? By the way, this means that they agree to lose the right to themselves. Do you see how serious it gets here? How many times you hear the gospel, but you don't hear this kind of thing? Jesus says, if you want to receive my life, you have to lose yours and the right to the life that I'll give you. And uh, by the way, I'm um, adding scriptures below. I'm not really uh, uh, going to display it unless Dan decides to do so because I give on some of those points more than one scripture. But for reference, the scriptures are there. So the second question is, are they ready to lose their lives in order to receive the life of Jesus? Question number three. Are they ready to forgive everyone who did them wrong? Do you know how many Christians I find they've been Christians for years? And you hear a statement like this. Okay, how's your father? No, he's alright, you know, but I don't want to see him. I said, why? No, you know what he did in my life? I said, but shouldn't you forgive and they'll say yes I forgive him but I don't want to see them <laughs> now does that sound like forgiveness brothers and sisters in Matthew 6 the Lord says after the Lord's prayer for if you don't forgive those who sinned against you neither my father in heaven will forgive you question number four are they ready to confess repent and turn from all their sins as well as to surrender all, not some, all to Jesus. I'll give you one beautiful scripture to memorize. You shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's Jeremiah 29, 13. Everyone seems to know Jeremiah 29, 11. But 29, 13 to me is more beautiful one. You shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Not 99.9% .9 is not good enough. The Lord didn't give on the cross 99.9. .9. He gave it all. He says it is finished and he died for it. So, um, are you ready to surrender all to Jesus? Confess, repent and turn from all their sins. That is your question number four. What you're doing with these questions is you clarifying clearly if they're truly ready to receive Jesus. Because they may have heard a very lukewarm message and uh, someone preached, receive Jesus and he'll heal you of your sickness. Is that all why you want Jesus? <laughs> um, question number five. Are they ready to become a temple of the Holy Spirit 
and obey him. Question number six. Are they ready to be baptized in obedience to the command of Jesus? I've met Christians that they've been Christians for some time. They never got baptized. I said them, why? Well, I'm not too sure I'm ready. Well, if they tell you that, then perhaps you're not, you are never ready even the first place to become a Christian. Because if you're ready <laughs> to receive Jesus, you should be ready immediately to get baptized. It's in our generations and the, the late generations that we actually, the uh, born again experience of confession of your faith and the baptism are separate events. But in the time of John the Baptist and Jesus, when you confess Jesus, immediately you get baptized. There's no waiting period. And I'm not saying that it is necessarily wrong. Ideally, after you believe, you should get baptized immediately. But there is no such a thing you can say, I am born again, believe in Jesus, but I'm not ready to be baptized. Then you perhaps you're not ready in the first place to receive Jesus. Because they are very the same thing. And I'll talk on part two about it. So the, the sixth question is, are you ready to be baptized in obedience to the command of Jesus? In Mark 16 verse 16, it says exactly that. If the answer of those question is, questions is affirmative, yes, then you can leave them in simple prayer as follows. Uh, this is a model of prayer. It doesn't have to be exactly, but it touches on those six main things. Okay. And the prayer goes on like this. Abba Father, I think it will be good uh, actually um, uh, will display this one for you. Abba Father, I believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah from the seed of David and that he died for my sins. I confess, repent and turn from all my sins as I choose to forgive all who sinned against me. And I ask you to forgive me. I forsake my life in your hands Lord Jesus and I ask for your eternal life from above I also ask the promised Holy Spirit for all who believe to come in me and teach me how to serve and obey you for your eternal glory amen this is a simple prayer where all these six main points are touched on and uh, I'm going to add, if your dogs are listening, I think George is translating everything he's saying. <laughs> we apologize, guys. We just don't have our uh, venue on the mountain yet. <laughs> we are preparing the, the, for the Tribulation Saints experience. <laughs> okay. The next step for the new believer is to get baptized. Uh, you can advise them immediately after leading them to the Lord to make arrangements to get baptized as soon as possible, to start reading God's Word and begin their discipleship process in the form of a Bible study, fellowship and prayer. If you can, give the newborn believer a Bible because that is for their spiritual food. Later in the series, I will touch on how to, um, to read your Bible for a baby newborn believers. And I just want to add, guys, if you are in a country or you strap for cash, you can't get a Bible, download, there's so many versions. So I've got the yes. U Bible. Um, I've downloaded that. It's such a great Bible because you can actually get it to read to you change translations so the U Bible uh, I'll drop a link as well such an awesome tool to have because whenever you you can search for scriptures you can search for things and it will come up it's great to have and a tool of evangelizing indeed, indeed. Um, you may ask how do I preach the gospel to someone who is not ready because now we touched on how to <laughs> how to lead someone who wants to come to Jesus well I've I've left here a few pointers that I want to give you. Your witness to the lost 
happens in few forms. Number one, by the way you speak, act and behave as you interact with people. Jesus says, by their fruits you shall know them. The more you grow in your relationship with Jesus, the more Christ will become visible through your actions and be desired by others. They'll see this. I can see this Jesus he keeps talking about in him. This is not normal. Normal person doesn't do that. Number two. Sometimes Jesus will send people on your path and the Holy Spirit will prompt you to witness the gospel to them. That's what the Lord does. Brings people on your path. Sometimes you don't have to go and search them. They come to you. Do not hesitate when it happens, but simply tell them what you believe about Jesus. You may not know, oh, how do I tell them? Very simple. Start by telling them how you came to believe in Jesus and what Jesus means to you. By telling them how you came to believe in Jesus, obviously you unfold some of the basic concepts of the faith. Remember, Introduce them to Jesus, not to a religion. Jesus is a person, he is not a religion. Don't ever start telling them, hey, you know, our church is the best in the world. He does this, he does that, he does this, he does that. Uh, you know, uh, we do this. You know what? Where is Jesus? And I'm not trying to criticize. They may be wonderful churches. But remember, your, your journey with, with uh, begins with Jesus. I'm going to touch on that. I was guilty of this, if I may confess. I said to myself, I'm going to go to church to meet friends or a wife. And I was going to church looking for the wrong things. And then when I left the church, I was disappointed. And I was like, I didn't find the Lord. Because at the end of the day, I wasn't looking for the Lord. Mm. So don't go to church if you're looking for <laughs> worldly things. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Jesus is a person. He's not a religion. In a situation like this, when the Lord urges you, now witness the gospel, pray silently. Ask the Holy Spirit, please help me. I'm not too sure how to proceed. And the Holy Spirit is faithful. He will guide you. Number three. Refrain from using standard formulas in sharing the gospel. Each person is unique. And you need to seek the Holy Spirit's guidance in each case. One formula doesn't fit all. Yes, the basics of the Gospels are the same, but how to let them believe in that. It's the Holy Spirit's work through you. You have to just be obedient and listen. Once the person decides to give his or her life to Jesus, you can always go through the basics of the faith as I outlined in the beginning part of the session if someone is ready how to highlight the main basics of the faith you can always go later to the person but the most important thing is for in the particular case that the Holy Spirit leads you to witness to them and to witness to them Jesus not a religion and the seed will be planted and if they want to act upon it you can follow up. Number four, if you are unsure how to, sp to break the ice in a particular situation where the Lord wants you to share the gospel, one of my favorite scriptures is about Jesus talking about the value of the human soul. That is my, one of my favorite scriptures. You can always ask a question like that. What do you think is the value of your soul? Or, alternative question, do you believe your soul has eternal value? If they respond positively, you can tell them how Jesus values your soul. But again, in each case, always ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. I will end here. Um, these videos are not meant to be too long. In the next part two, we will discuss how to baptize a person. Did you know that 
anyone can baptize a person. Do you have the faith to do that? Do you know what to tell them before the baptism? And what is important that they remember they're about to do? I will finish here with my favorite scripture that I've just quoted. And it's recorded in Matthew 16 verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There might be someone watching this video that is ready to give his life to the Lord now. If that is you, I will lead you exactly the same prayer that I read just now. This I will do for you. If you're that person, follow me in that scripture. Actually in that prayer. And there we go. Abba Father, I believe that Jesus is the promised Messiah from the seed of David and that he died for my sins. I confess, repent and turn from all my sins as I choose to forgive all who sinned against me. And I ask you to forgive me. I forsake my life in your hands. Lord Jesus. And I ask for your eternal life from above. I also ask the promised Holy Spirit. For all who believe to come in me and teach me how to serve and obey you for your eternal glory. Amen. If that was you, congratulations, my newborn brother or sister. The Lord bless you. You've done the most important decision in your life. From today, your eternity has changed. From eternal damnation into eternal salvation. Congratulations. Please send a message to us. Let us know who you are and we want to pray for you and bless you. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I'll end up with handing yeah, over to I'm going to say in closing, you know, guys, when you confess your problems before men, Men just use it against you. You and you know, I have experienced this firsthand. So give your problems to God. Trust in God. And you know what? I am going to apologize. Sometimes Christians can, you, you know, we spoke about this. You get warriors and you get lovers. And sometimes when you first become a Christian, you are a warrior. Get the warrior spirit. And you tend to push people down when you're trying to evangelize. I know what happened to me. I was a bit extreme. I apologize if we as Christians have offended people at at the end of the day, we have to spread this gospel. And sometimes we don't always know what we're doing. and We haven't been discipled. But God bless you guys. And remember to just give everything to the Lord. We're about to surrender, but just keep practicing. Ciao, guys. God bless. Bless you, brothers and sisters. Take care.